Okay, we're going to pick up from what we started off last week, the second time, talking about soul winning, public ministry. I think public ministry is a, is a better way to describe. And we looked at last time, Mark 16 and Matthew 28. And starting off with Proverbs 11, verse 30. We'll go there, Proverbs 11, verse 30. I think would be a very wise scripture to, to have these on. Proverbs 11.30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. <coughs> and he that winneth souls is wise. That's where we begin. That's where we're going to set off each and every time that we start off these, this uh, lesson on soul winning and public ministry. And when we go to Psalms chapter 1, Psalms chapter 1, just checking my wire here, this is the second time I've done this, stupid wire. It said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Now, with that aspect, what we're doing, let's go to head to Romans chapter 10. And with Proverbs and Psalms, it's life, what we're doing. We'll see in a moment. It's commanded by God to go in all the world and preach the gospel. It's commanded in Matthew to go teach the gospel. And it's not preachers, Sunday school teachers, evangelists, missionaries. It is all saved born again Christians are told to go all in the world and preach the gospel. And when God says go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, today I hope to look at why, who, as far as this preaching. And Romans chapter 10 verses 14 how then shall they call on him whom they have not believed, unsaved people? How shall they believe on him in whom they have not heard, unsaved people? How shall they hear without a preacher, unsaved people? Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Why? Because they need the preacher. They need to hear. Scripture with Scripture. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Go ye into the world and preach. There is the sending. There is the lost people. There is God sending. As is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. We've seen this in Mark 16. We've seen this in Matthew 28. We see it in Romans 10. They need a preacher. They don't need a lighthouse. They don't need a light bulb. They don't need your love. They don't need how you live. They don't need a comfort. They need a preacher. And Matthew says, teach him last week's study. A preacher and a teacher. But they have not all believed, they have not all obeyed the gospel. For as Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So here's lost people, here are the saved people. In the middle of this message, we get not everybody's going to be saved. And then we go right back, closing off. They've got to hear, and how can they hear? The unbeliever needs a preacher. You'll say, well, it's my pastor. No. That is us. All of us are saved. 
One of the first things you'll find out once you get into public ministry, you will at least hear this once in your life that don't preach to me. And you'll look at me, I'm not a preacher. Yes, you are. Preaching and teaching, Matthew 28 and Mark 16, Mark 16, Matthew 28. And you got to realize that preacher is sent by God. How shall they preach except they be sent? Now keep your place in Romans and let's go to Matthew 9. Matthew chapter 9. You've got a great responsibility as a Christian. And God has given you the liberty. The free will say, no, I'm not going to do it. Or, show me how, Lord. Let me go. And in Matthew 9.38, and let me get in, I'm in 8.38. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. Okay. Go in all the world, preach the gospel. Go in all every creature and teach them. How shall they hear? How shall they accept the preacher be sent? How are they going to hear? How are they going to know without God sending a preacher? And we take Matthew 9, 38 in the equation, what do we get? There are people praying, should be praying, that you go out and preach. You go out and teach. Pass out gospel tracts, knocking on doors, actual street preaching, visiting a... a, 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 a a convalescent home, a prison, whatever that public ministry. There are people praying that you go. There are people praying for me that I continue in the ministry. There are people who are praying. There are mothers praying for their children that they will hear the gospel. They will get saved and you may cross them children. And there are people crying out to God, saved and lost. God, will you send somebody? That's my prayer. I've got missionaries that I support. I've got missionary that I want God to send to people. I want to pray for people. There are people I deal with that I want God, please send someone who will water. And there are people who are seeking to me by God that I do the watering. And it all comes down to the public ministry is and how shall they preach except they be sent and they're sent by God. Matthew 9 and Matthew 28 and, Ma and Mark chapter 16. Go, you know, that's God, that's Jesus Christ. We are called by God for a free will to go out there in a public ministry and pass out tracts, use our mouth, whatever ability God's given us, whatever talent that we have, that we may put that talent to interest and gain crowns and rewards. And then again, we see here, not all have believed our report. And this is the second week we're looking at this, and I want to get you off the idea everybody's going to love you. Everybody's going to be so happy you're going to do what you're doing. And what you got to realize is going to be not just closed doors. There are going to be doors that will be slammed in your face. And I'm not talking about, and I could be also talking about, knocking on door ministry marvel not if the world hates you no one hated Jesus first there will be people at that nursing home that's going to hate you and there will be some that love you there's going to be some people that are going to hate you preaching there's going to be some people that are going to love you preaching there's going to be some people that love you visit them in jail and there's going to be some that are going to hate you in jail and wherever you go, when you decide to leave gospel tracks in the bathroom, that janitor is going to be upset. He's going to pick them up and put them in the garbage. When you should pick them up and read them. 
Keep your place in Romans. Let's look at Matthew 7.13. And when you know that the ministry is not going to be 100%, there will be people that will come up to you and say, Oh, where's all your group of people? How come you don't have so many people? Well, they don't know what the Bible says. In Matthew 7, 13, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way, broad way, broad way, that leadeth into destruction, and many there be which go thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth into life, and few there be that find it. Elias, no, and no one believes our report, Isaiah 53. Many are going to go the broad way. Many are going to turn away from you. Few. It's never 100%. And then you could go days, weeks, months, years. And you may not see someone come to Christ and get saved. You may not see a worldly Christian get right. But that's not all you're seeing. You don't know what those people, that person is going to do later on if the Lord tarries. Remember, Paul said, I have planted, Apollos watered, and God giveth increase. When you're dealing with a group of people and they may not get right, they may not listen to you, they may flip you the bird. But they may do something later. They may get right, they may get saved, and you may not ever see it. Like supporting a missionary. You don't see all the work that your money's putting into, and yet you'll get the results that whatever happens. So don't think when you get there, oh, I haven't seen anything in days, I haven't seen anything in weeks and months. Man, this has been dead. And years, it's been dead. You don't know what's happened to that seed. There's been times... You know, we have tomato plants, and I always use tomato plants. Love tomato. There's been times my wife come into me and says, Hey, you don't have the compost, but I've got two tomato plants. We didn't plant them. They came of their own the following year through, you know, all the winter and all that. And here's two plants that we never expected. That's why the Bible likens to the public ministry of soul wind as planting. You don't realize what's going to happen. So, the lost people need someone to come to them. And the Bible tells those that are saved to go. God sends us. And that free will be yea or nay. Now, the next subject here. Right, weird, verse 15. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Let's look at the feet for a moment. We have to keep our feet healthy, both physical and spiritual. If your feet are unhealthy, sick, tired, they're not going to do much. Diabetes, ulcers, and a lot of things that we do to our body inflicts what our feet are. And if our feet are painful and sore that we cannot do anything, then we're not doing nothing. Age will bring our feet to unhealthiness and we will be restricted in what we could do from what we did 5, 10 years ago, 20 years. We got to keep our feet well. We got to keep them proper. And then another application of our feet being healthy is spiritual. We've got to read and we got to pray and we got to study. And then when we do those things, when our feet walk to somebody and we've got to say which is completely proper, I don't know. 
to answer that question. We are to take our feet home, put our feet where we study our Bible and read our Bible, make sure our feet are comfortable, and dig in to the Bible to find where that question, where that thing is. So the next time, And then another thing about our feet, number two, is we got to keep them from becoming cold. Revelation 3. Revelation 3. I know thy works, verse 15. Thou art neither cold nor hot. I word that thou wert cold or hot. And what I mean by keeping our feet cold is spiritually advocating this verse here is don't let them die. Don't let them give up the ministry you're doing. Where you're walking to door, to stump, to door, to stairs. Where you're walking through the halls of a hospital or a nursing home. Whether you're walking the hallways of a prison. You're, you're standing on the street corner. You're, you're passing out gospel tracts. Wherever your feet are that God's called you to be. Keep those feet from getting cold. Keep those feet from wanting to be sitting up. Keep those feet from want to lie down and stop it. And in prayer say, God, you know what? These feet, I think they can do a little more. Can we go somewhere else with these feet too in addition to where we are now? And I'll pray that prayer. We've got a wonderful, great ministry that God has added to us. And in addition, and I'm praying, Lord God, for a third one. I don't want my feet to give up. I want them to be beautiful feet before God. And the only way for them to be beautiful feet is they keep doing what they're supposed to be doing. And number three, you've got to keep your feet on the proper path. John 14, verse 6. You think it was all into that beautiful feet, but the beautiful feet that God loves, they're healthy feet. They're knowledgeable feet. And they are feet that are still doing. You think God enjoys a foot that has not stepped out for any lost soul in years, months, weeks? There's no joy in, in, of God in feet that become lazy. And God loves them feet that say, hey, let's step up and do more. In John 14, 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we've got to keep our feet on the proper path. And one of the biggest things in a, any public ministry is you cannot become distracted. We are there to preach the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scripture. Now we are there for lost people to know about Jesus Christ and the saving grace. We are there for, for saved people who don't have any idea what they're supposed to be doing. They're in the worldly church. They're worldly themselves. Whatever they, we are to encourage them to get their feet going and to do right. We have no business in a public ministry to be pointing out short shirts. Short dresses, smoking, tattooed, attitudes, anger, swearing, or anything else. Their doctrine. We have no business doing that. An individual? Out of the pulpit in the church? Yes, but not the street ministry. We are only going to get seconds, if not minutes, And very rarely are you going to get 30 minutes. And our message is not, don't do this. That's a sin. That's a major sin. Oh, you blessed uh, sodomites. You're the wicked of the world. And all. Oh, you're no, that's not it. We're there to show that they are sinners, but we are show that they're sinners and they have hope through Jesus Christ by the gospel. That Jesus Christ suffered and died and was buried for them. That's the proper path. That's the path is to show them the way of righteousness. Show them that there is a hell. There is a heaven. There is a Savior. They are sinners. 
many times people come up to me and w what the world think. Oh, here's this big, great sin. I say, listen, have you ever stolen anything? Have you ever told a lie? All have sinned. Those are just as bad sins as the big, bad sins. I'll take their eyes off, you know, because a lot of people, you know, they want, they want you to get you in an argument. And if they get you in an argument, you are going off that path. And it's going to be hard because the flesh is going to step in. Anger is going to step in. Frustration will step in. And they will get you off the path too. How is that? Well, let me tell you what's going on. With us in our public ministries, they've hired a DJ to overpower what I preach. And I get in the flesh. I get angry. I get upset. I'm aggravated. And I have stepped off the path. I have left the gospel. I have turned to fighting them. Which is one of the no-nos, the big rules of the public ministry. You don't do that. You stick and stay to the gospel. They are sinners. They are going to hell without Jesus Christ. And they need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. That's the path. And when people come up to you, they want to argue, they want to fight you, they want to distract you. you got to remove that distraction. you got to get on that path again and don't even allow it to be going off on rabbit trails. No one likes rabbit trails. Don't you do it. And believe me, the world and Satan will send. And your own flesh will be ones that will try to take you off that path. The path is... Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You show them the way, you show them the truth, and you show them the life. And when it comes to sin, you put sin as general, as a big category. All have sin. Not just that person walking down the street that, that got your attention. All have sin. The number four... We've got to keep our feet clean. John 13. John 13 verse 4. And he rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and wiped them with a towel wherewith he was girded. He's washing the disciples' feet because... They're going to get filthy. And literal, literal dirt and dust and mud. Literal. Filthy feet is not going to become healthy feet. They're going to become sorry feet. But spiritualize 1 John 1 9. If I may spiritualize it, 1 John 1 9. 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, what's that one? Before you go out in the public ministry, confess your sins and get them under the blood of Jesus Christ. It ain't going to do you no good. It may not bring no results. If you're a filthy vessel, God can't use you. And Paul tells us we're to keep our vessels clean. And that's by confessing our sins and putting them under the blood of Jesus Christ and trusting God to forgive us our sins. Not only would we have healthy feet, we're to have clean feet. We're our lives to be clean so God can use us. Now the fact is, if there's an opportunity where you're going, God can say, hey, there's a clean vessel. I'm going to use him. Whereas if we're a vessel full of sin and, the, and grease and gunking it, and God say, ew, I can't even touch that. And then when we go back to Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, you may go. How shall then they preach except they be sent? Okay, you may go. You go in your sins. God's not sending you. God wants you clean. God wants you useful. And when you go without your sins being confessed through the blood of Jesus Christ, you're going on your own merits and it ain't going to do you no good because God's not going to use you. Keep 
keep your sin? How can you preach about sins to other people? How can you pick on them for the righteousness through Jesus Christ were able to forgive men of their sins? And you're standing there, you're sitting there, whatever you're doing there, and you're filled of sin yourself. That's the illustration that God's given. You know, there's a beam in your eye, there's a sliver in your eye, but there's a great beam in my eye. We got to be clean when we go out in the public. Would it be great if you had this, this, you know, this white tuxedo and you're going to this formal whatever it is that requires a white tuxedo and you got pizza stain all on the front of your white tuxedo? That's disgusting. And yet, when God sees us go out in the ministry and doing something, and He sees the sins, it's like having that pizza on the white tuxedo. And you're not going to be the same. When you got unconfessed sin in your life, it's not. I, I've had both cases, and then you got to keep your feet moving. Do not stop. Keep going with what you're doing, whatever that public ministry is. Keep going. We've already talked about this from getting cold, but keep them going. And then when you're there and you're established and, and God's using you and it's a blessing. And then say, God, where else can I go? What else can I do? And then when we're going back to keep John 14, verse 6, the way, the truth, and the path. There are paths that have already been made. By people who have planted. And when you go across that path that's already been made, you may be watery. And then again, you may have a path that's never been a path. And God may want you to take those feet and begin a path that someone else can go and follow what you've done. You realize. When you take Peter, James, John, Paul, who is they set forth paths that we follow today? There are people getting saved today that are still going to be credited to Peter, James, John, and Paul by the paths they set forth. And yet there are missionaries that have gone into countries that no one's ever gone into ever has ever the bible and the gospel ever gone into and that missionary has set forth to start that path where others have now walked where that missionary walked that no one's ever gone and now god has sent forth others to follow that path that no one's walked and god may through prayers of others and, and for God to reach out there, God may have you step forth and start a path that others will follow tomorrow, Lord willing. You may be the beginner. People are praying and should be praying for God to send people out into the harvest. And what is to say that that harvest has never ever been attended to but by someone new? I talked to a few people. Oh, they're looking for someone to give them a church that's already established. It's like, try to start a new one. Oh, I don't want to do that. Why not? Every church that has been attended to today has been started by somebody who's never started a church at that spot. It's been a path. Started by someone where there's never been a path. People are praying. You should be praying. And there are unsaved people, Romans chapter 10. It says, how then shall they call on him, Jesus, in whom they have not believed. They've never believed on Jesus Christ ever. They're lost. They're going to hell. 
And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? They're not going to be sitting down anywhere where they are in the world. And then come to the conclusion, maybe get up to go get a soldier and first. Oh, I gotta believe on Jesus Christ as my Savior. I'll do it now. That's not gonna happen. And people say, "What about the heathen that never knew?" And that's the truth. But friend, you've been a heathen, and you didn't know until someone came and told you. So now you're a heathen that knows. <laughs> And you're worse off, according to the Romans, than a heathen that doesn't know. Because now you know. How did you know God sent a preacher? Whom have they had not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? You can't have a mission field if there's no mission. You cannot have that mission without a missionary. And people think of, oh, missionary, that guy goes over Asia, that guy goes over Greece, that guy that goes in Africa, the guy that goes to Australia, the guy that goes wherever. Well, friend, what about the missionary that goes right next door to your house and the house across the street? Let's look at Acts, I think it's 1. Acts chapter 1. Verse 8. Acts 1 8. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Witnesses, what we call witnessing. Unto me, both in Jerusalem. That's where they are right now. They're in Jerusalem. So get your butt out there and witness around Jerusalem. And they will. What city are you in? What town are you in? Get witnessing there. I lived in Norwich. God sent me to Norwich. God gave me, I, as far as I can believe, and I, I'll probably lie if I would say 100%, but practically most of all the houses in Norwich, Connecticut, I was able to do something as far as a ministry. As far as I know. We've had a ministry there downtown Norwich. We had a ministry at the courthouse. We had a ministry at the NFA. First time I ever street preach was there. All right. Did it right in my hometown. Tried to start a church there. It didn't work. And in Judea. So we branched out a little further. Judea is north of Jerusalem. It is the capital of Israel. North. Stretch out further from your house. The next town. The next county. The next area. If you finish your Jerusalem, move on. And then the Samaria. What's Samaria? God moved me from, from Connecticut to Florida. When I preach on the streets of Daytona Beach and, and Fort Orange, that's not my Jerusalem. My Jerusalem, my, my roots began in New London County, Connecticut. God says, you're done there. You're finished. You've done your job here. Now take those feet and go down to Florida and do exactly what you're doing there. Okay, Lord. I'll stay in my Smyrna. Smyrna is another capital. I'm in another capital. I'm going to blow on this one. I think Tallahassee. I don't know what the capital of Florida is. But here I am in another capital. I'm in another region that has another capital. I've done my area. And onto the other most parts of the earth. Those are the Africa. Those are the Caribbean. Those are the Mexicans. Those are the South America. Those are the European. Those are the Asia. Those are the Africa. But right now, have I done, have you done, have we done our Jerusalem? Okay? Move to Judea. Move around Judea. And then maybe God will send you out to Samaria. And then take care of those areas you can't go. Missionaries. I support missionaries. You give money to missionary. Great. Wonderful. But have you taken care of your hometown? God said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Teach the gospel. Matthew 28. 
Mark chapter 16. And the reason why, Romans chapter 10, is they need those that have not ever believed on Jesus. They need the preacher. And that preacher must be sent by God. And he'll probably start you right there in your hometown. Always will. And you know what the Bible says? As far as you believe that everybody in your hometown is going to get saved. Jesus said, and I'm not quoting this completely. The fact is, they're not going to want you in your hometown. They're not going to love you in your amongst your hometown. Matter of fact, they're going to hate you. Time to move on. And then you move to Jerusalem. Then you move to Judea. Then you reach out to Samaria. Then the, all the missionaries in the world. And while you're doing that, we are told in Matthew 9, Matthew 9, pray to God that God will send others out there because they need to be sent by God. And we need to do what God's told us to do, to go out there. And it's no good to pray to God to send people. And God says, go. And you sit there and don't do nothing. You've got to keep your feet moving. And when you go, those preachers' feet is beautiful to God. And then we need to realize not all are going to obey. Again, we talked about this last time. Many will go the broad way. And as you get into public ministry, your eyes are going to tear. You're going to get upset over those many. And you're going to pray. And you're going to be earnestly praying. And then you got to keep your feet healthy, both spiritual and physical. you got to keep them well so you can do what you need to do on those feet. Those feet have a big burden of carrying you and the load of the Bible and the gospel. Keep them physical and keep them spiritually healthy. And keep them from being cold. Don't give up. Be nonstop as your feet. Keep them going until God calls you home. Keep your feet on the proper path. You're there for the lost people to learn about Jesus. You're there to, to, for, for worldly Christians to get up and go. And even Christians that are doing, they are seeking God. And you're there for an encouragement for them to keep, hey, someone else is doing it. Praise God. And then keep your feet clean. Both physical and spiritual again. Keep them washed. You can't witness the people if your feet stink. And then 1 John 1, 9, you need to confess your sins. You need to be cleaned up, ready up, prepared up when you get out there and witness. And again, just keep your feet moving. Keep them going. Don't stop. Don't give up. And be sorry for the fact is, it, you know, if your feet do become so that you cannot ever use them again. You still can be used at lesser of value, but you still can be used. But let it not be because you've done something for your feet not to be used. I mean, if you've got ailments and problems that you are incapable of taking care of, I mean... If you get a clot that ruins your legs, that's nothing you, you've done. But even for me, I mean, diabetes and all that, I mean, I should be taking better care of my feet. And then old age is going to set in. But the beautiful feet is that there are people who do not know about Jesus Christ. And... As America goes away from more and more away from God in the Bible, there will be Americans that are being produced that will have no idea what God is, no idea who Jesus is. And it would be up to us who have a Bible, who are saved, to go out there and tell them. What about the heathen in... Okay. Get saved. Pray to God. And then get out there and do what God told you to do. Go ye all the world and preach and teach to every creature. And the rewards God will give you. But never mind the rewards. We're not here for the rewards. The greatest reward is that someone's going to go to hell and you better stop them. You better prevent them. And if they do end up in hell burning for all eternity, you have better been the roadblock that tried to stop them. 